Hey everybody, this video is focused on the production function and more specifically, changes in marginal returns. Now here's the deal. When you start studying this, you are probably studying theory of the firm, how a single firm makes decisions. And to understand how a single firm makes decisions, you need to understand their cost structure. To understand their cost structure, you need to understand the production function. Now here's the deal. When you start studying theory of the firm, you're going to start drawing all these graphs. And these graphs are going to have curves on it, like the marginal cost curve, average total total cost curve and average variable cost curve. And spoiler alert, the curve shape is going to be this U shape, okay? You're going to have this U shape. And this is the video for you to gain kind of strong foundational knowledge about why that curve is U shaped, okay? So I just think this video is so important, guys. It's foundational to understanding the cost structure of a business, especially a business that makes a good. So let's get going into it, right? Marginal return. What is that? What is marginal returns? It's really simple, guys. What is the return of production? Well, it's the output, right? So marginal returns is our change in output when we change a variable input by one, keeping all other inputs constant. Now, it is so important that you understand that when we study marginal returns and the production function, we are in the short run, which means we have both fixed cost and variable cost, okay? Fixed cost and variable cost. In the long run, all you have is variable cost, but that's not what we're in. We're in the short run. We have fixed cost and variable cost. Our number one go-to for fixed cost is like the facility size. Our number one go-to for variable cost is laborers. When I say go-to, that's kind of like the conceptual thing to go to when you're just thinking, well, what would be a fixed cost? Facility size for sure. What would be a variable cost? The number of laborers for sure. Okay. So again, one more time, marginal returns. It's our change in output that we get by changing a variable input by one, keeping all other inputs constant. Pretty straightforward. Now, what we're going to be looking at is a Subway sandwich shop. Why is that? Because we've pretty much all been in a Subway sandwich shop, or at least 98% of us. All right, so got some common ground here. In this first column, you can see I'm changing that variable input by one. That's what's going on here. The second column, I put output here. If you're kind of like reading along in a, in a chapter and you have like a similar table, it might say total product. So that's what I mean by this. this is my total output. It's my total product. So in other words, when I say get to this row right here and I've got four people working there, guys, I'm saying they can make 32 sandwiches in total. And just to let you know, I'm going to be kind of talking on the per hour basis. So I'll be four workers can make 32 sandwiches in total in an hour, okay? But here's the really important column right here, right? It's the marginal product. What's the marginal product, guys? That's the marginal return. These two things are just pretty much interchangeable. I mean, just think of the term marginal product. It's my change in products I get when I change a variable input by one, keeping all other inputs constant. If you're like, hey, that sounds like what you said before, it is. It is what I said before. Marginal product goes hand in hand with marginal returns, okay? Same thing. So let's get to it, okay? Let's basically hire our first worker. Our first worker, when we only have one person working there, they can only make five sandwiches per hour. Now, why do I say only make five sandwiches per hour? Because here's what they're doing. They're doing the meat side, the veggie side, checking people out at the cash register, answering the phone, and running to the back when something runs out. And we know if they touch the phone or the cash register, run to the back, they gotta wash their hands, right? Take the glove off, wash hands, put new gloves on, all of that type of stuff. No specialization at all, okay? Now, what does that mean the marginal product is? Well, look. When we had zero laborers, I don't have that row, but if we had zero laborers, our output would have been zero. So what's our change in output we get from hiring one worker, that first worker? It's five, right? So our total product and our marginal product is the same when we hit one, just when we get one worker there. But now we're going to hire the second worker, and now we get some specialization, right? Hey, you make sandwiches, you check people out, answer the phone, and get stuff in the back if we run out of it, okay? So we've got some specialization going on. So in total, they can now make 12 sandwiches per hour. So what is our marginal product? What's our change in output we get by adding one more variable input? What again, once again, the variable input is the labor, right? It is seven, right? How did I get that seven? Five to 12 right there. So we we're able to make five with one worker, 12 with two workers. What's the marginal product? What's the change in output we get by adding one more worker to this thing? It is seven. And this means that what this firm is encountering right now is something called increasing marginal returns. Now, 
Increasing marginal returns has nothing to do with this number right here being bigger than this number. This number getting bigger is not increasing marginal returns. It's all about, hey, there's the marginal word, right? This number getting bigger. The marginal product is getting larger. You're having increasing marginal returns, okay? Now, hire the third person. Even more specialization, right? Meat side, veggie side. So you're on the meat, you're on the veggie. You do the checking out, answer the phone, get stuff if we need stuff. So guess what? 12 to 22. So that means by hiring one more worker, we're gonna be able to make 10 more sandwiches. Again, increasing marginal returns because we're getting even more specialization. Hire a fourth worker. Okay, so now we've got a veggie side and a meat side and somebody checking somebody out, checking people out, answering the phone, somebody else running the back. Okay, so more specialization, but we also might get a little bit of downtime. So we get more specialization, good, so we get some gains from that, but we also have a little bit of downtime. And so I'm going to go ahead and say, hey, we're going to go from 22 sandwiches to 32 sandwiches. We're certainly getting some gains here, but that's 10 again. And what that means is we're getting constant marginal returns. So first worker, we got an increasing marginal returns, increasing marginal returns. Increasing marginal returns it has to do with five going to seven going to ten. But on this fourth person, we got constant marginal returns. So the fourth person is associated with constant marginal returns. Now let's hire a fifth person. Hmm, now it's a little bit tough, right? Veggie side, veggie side is maybe a little slower than the meat side. So you're on the meat side, two on the veggie side. Somebody checking people out after the phone. Somebody running the back. Okay, certainly gonna have some downtime. We're probably gonna have people kind of running into each other a little bit, right? Might even have some people kind of starting to have side conversations and things like that. We're gonna be able to make more sandwiches, okay? Because we got a little bit more specialization going on, but our gains are not that great. Only four more sandwiches, right? 32 to 36. Our marginal product, our additional output by hiring this fifth worker is just four, which means now we are getting to a place that we're getting diminishing or decreasing. And by the word, by the way, diminishing and decreasing interchangeable, right? Same meaning. Diminishing, decreasing marginal returns, okay? So with this fifth person, we're getting diminishing marginal returns, otherwise known as decreasing marginal returns. Sixth person. I'm not sure we're going to stick the sixth person. We're going to try to put them somewhere. But guys, I mean, now we've got definitely some downtime. We've got, you know, situations where certainly people are going to begin to talk to, we, talk to each other uh, on the side. We might even have clicks forming. This is not a good situation. Look how many we're going to make in an hour. 35. Negative, right? Negative one. Guys, this is negative marginal returns. So I'm going to go ahead and do something right now. When you study theory of the firm, you will never, ever, ever hire that sixth person, okay? You might hire the fifth person, but you will never hire the sixth person, okay? You'll never hire that person when you start getting negative marginal returns. So again, one through three, you're getting increasing marginal returns. The fourth, per fourth person, now you're getting constant marginal returns. The fifth person, decreasing marginal returns. That, what I just told you about that increasing, going to constant, going to decreasing, is a situation for the short run. It's when the facility size is fixed, right? I can't change the Subway sandwich size. I can't change probably even the counter space, okay? And all I'm changing is a single variable input with all that other stuff fixed. And when that is the case, because of what I just described to you, you generally get what I just described, a situation of increasing marginal returns, constant marginal occur returns, and then diminishing marginal returns. And that idea right there, that what I'm just what we just went through is why the marginal cost curve, the average variable cost curve, and the average total cost curve have that U shape that you're going to be drawing has everything to do with that first getting increasing returns, then constant, and then decreasing returns. Man, I hope that made sense to you. I really think foundational video, I think it can make your study of, you know, basically the cost of production and theory of the firm in general just a lot easier if you embrace what we just went over. Hope it made sense to you. We'll see you in the next video.